Hey. Not supposed to do that. So a couple of days ago, I put out a video on how I made an OpenGL base library. And today I wanna to kind of extend that base library because I mentioned that it was very much a work in progress. And in fact, it just will be a work in progress for the unforeseeable future as most software projects are. There are just gonna be things that we discover along the way of using this thing where we're gonna just wanna add stuff to it. It's pretty typical. So don't expect this to be any kind of finished product. I keep saying that every time, but I just want you guys to be on the same page as me regarding what this is. So OpenGL Core is kind of what I've called it. Here it is on GitHub. There'll be a link in the description below. You can access it. It's just github.com slash the channel slash OpenGL. And basically the purpose of this whole library is just to make writing OpenGL code really straightforward and really easy without having to like download some kind of wrapper or extension loader or like a windowing system setting that up, input events, none of that stuff. You basically just clone this library and you're ready to type OpenGL code straight away with very, very minimal setup time. And the whole purpose of course for this was to enable me to kind of teach OpenGL going forward as well as for yourselves as well. If you wanna just kind of experiment with OpenGL or play around with it, test something out without having to kind of go through this kind of tedious setup process every single time. Time. So the additions that I've kind of made to this since last time, I've, I've added some commits just today. I basically separated the sandbox and examples as I mentioned I would and there's just some other kind of uh, miscellaneous fixes that I've done as well. I wanna specifically talk about pre-make in this video because what I've done is I've kind of separated the one pre-make script that did everything except for the dependencies into multiple pre-make scripts for basically every project, OpenGL core examples and, sa and sandbox that are inside this repository. And separating your pre-make files into multiple files like that is not the most straightforward thing to do, but it's really, really powerful for the future because it means that you can, for example, generate multiple solution files easily. So let's take a look at what this actually does, how it's changed, and then we'll, we'll actually take a look at my additions to the library as well. So this is the this is the root of the repository. This is what you get when you clone it. If we go into scripts and then run win premake.bat, then you'll see that it generates this OpenGL sandbox solution, a bunch of project files, and also this OpenGL example solution. So we actually have two solution files being generated from this premake script. And the purpose for this is if we go back a directory, we have examples and, and sandbox. Sandbox, as I mentioned, is something that is supposed to be, this is where you dive in and write your OpenGL code. So for example, this is fresh after cloning the repository and I've generated the project files, I can jump in here. I can open OpenGL sandbox and then sandbox layer.cpp, which is the kind of main file here. And then it's got a bunch of comments for where I can kind of do things within this file without having to even create any files or do anything really. So for example, I've got my initialization code here. I've got my update code here. What I could do is just immediately start typing in OpenGL code. So I could, for example, set the clear color to like red. And then in on update, I might just go ahead and clear the color buffer. Then all I have to do is run the program and you can see that that's really it. If I wanted to do more, which of course is likely, I can just dive in and do it. I don't have to worry about setting anything up and that's the whole purpose of this library. Of course, there's a lot more you can actually do. This is just scratching the surface. So here we have our red clear color, done, simple as that. So this was the sandbox project, but then there's also another project, which is the examples project. And this is gonna be like a library of examples that we basically build up over time. So at the moment, it's got a very, very basic example that just shows what you can kind of do with the library. I extended it a little bit because I wanted to test some things out. So if we take a look at this, if we open up example layer.cpp, you know, this creates like a vertex array, it loads some shaders. Um, we have some basic event processing, kind of shows you how you can use the event system here. So what this does is if the mouse button is pressed, the square color is changed, the color of the square that is. We can also control this stuff through IAM GUI. So if we launch this, you'll see that we have a little bit more of an example. We've actually got a square. This uses the camera system, so I can kind of zoom in and out and move it around just like that. If I click any mouse button and hold it down, you can see the color changes to whatever this kind of alternate color here is. So I could change the base color to like pink or something like that. And then the alternate color to black, for example. And if I hold the mouse button down, it changes to black. Very, very simple OpenGL example, but it shows you how you can kind of use the OpenGL code to actually construct the, ver the vertices and everything required for this actual square, as well as control the colors through IAM GUI and then hook into the event system to do anything really. So with these two projects in mind, how do we split up pre-make to generate both of those things? Well, 
We have our base premake5.lua script over here. If I open this with VS Code, we can read what this is all about. It's not particularly long, it's about 70 lines of code. What we have here is the OpenGL Sandbox project. Now workspace in premake, of course, is it translates directly to a Visual Studio solution. So we have the Sandbox workspace, which is that Sandbox solution. We have some configuration set up, all the kind of stuff you would expect, include directories. These are just compiler include directories for all of the different dependencies. And then what we do is when it's time to actually include a project, so we do include these kind of dependencies as standard. Include OpenGL core means that we actually include the premake5.lua file inside that OpenGL core folder. So it has its own Lua script, which describes the actual project property. So if we open up OpenGL core and then premake5.lua, you'll see we have a very kind of simple Lua script here, which is just the OpenGL core project standalone. And the benefit of kind of separating this out into its own file means that I can use that same project multiple times because the OpenGL sandbox solution needs to reference this OpenGL core project, but so does that OpenGL example solution. So both of those solutions, they both need to reference that one project, but I don't wanna rewrite the whole project file or do anything weird like that. I just wanna kind of reference the existing one. And the big secret of doing that, not that it's a huge secret, is we basically use this include external file. So this is my OpenGL example solution, right? The first time I do this, I just include it. But once it's been included once, I can reuse it by using include external. And what this will do is kind of reference that project without actually rerunning that entire script because I don't wanna run all this lower script. I don't wanna set up the files again. I don't wanna set up this whole OpenGL core project. All I wanna do is include it again inside this workspace because I've started a new workspace. It's my OpenGL examples workspace. This should not be doubled up like that. I better fix that. I need to include that OpenGL core project again so I can use include external. Same with the dependencies because they've already been included once up here in kind of the first sandbox workspace, but then to include them again, I can just use include external. Now you can see that OpenGL examples itself and OpenGL sandbox itself, they're also separate Lua files. So if I go up a directory and I go to OpenGL examples, and I drag in that premake 5 Lua file, that is that kind of premake 5 Lua file. And then back over here inside OpenGL Sandbox, I have the same thing set up. So I can kind of set up a separate premake script for every single project I have, and then just reference them, you know, for the first time with include, and then if, if, if they use more than once with include external. So it's nice and easy. And it definitely makes this whole thing a lot more modular and a lot more simple. So this definitely simplifies a kind of larger pre-make project where instead of just having one massive script that does everything and then in turn can only really generate that one solution for me, by having separate pre-make files per project, I can reuse those projects for multiple workspaces, right? So in this case, for multiple solutions, because I wanted that examples one where you can just dive in and look at the examples, but then I also wanted the sandbox one where you can just open it up and start typing in your OpenGL code in like kind of a blank file. And that's pretty much it. I don't think there's much more I could really say. If you're still kind of confused by this, then definitely check out the repository because that's what has these premake files in it. Just give them a read. I'm sure it will make sense. You can always Google like premake five include external or something like that if you're not sure as to what a particular keyword actually does. But it is pretty simple and it, and it's pretty powerful and I love using premake. Even, even on Windows, making all the builds be a lot more standardized, meaning someone with like different Windows SDK versions, for example, can generate the right solution files or if they're using different versions of Visual Studio, it kind of makes everything a lot more robust because you're not relying on a single version of Visual Studio and then having to manually change anything like that. It's also really important for other platforms like Mac and Linux. And we'll see that in the future as we bring this library to those platforms. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit that like button, drop a comment below with your thoughts, or if you wanna see something specific, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.